back here at the Oakland Coliseum, and you know the story. Oakland taking the field and trailing three games to none and facing elimination. Major League as he emerges from the dugout and goes to the mound. He's got the whole world in his hands. I guess you could say in outer space then is Ricky Henderson in left field. Dave Henderson in center field. And the big surprise of the night, Willie McGee starting in right field. Jose Canseco has been scratched. Carney Lansford at third base. Because of the injury to Walter Weiss, Mike Gallego continues to play shortstop. Willie Randolph, his 46th postseason game at second. Mark McGuire over at first base. And another surprise, Terry Steinbuck is not in there. Neither is Ron Hassey, but Jamie Quirk his first appearance in a World Series game, and this is his third World Series, and he'll catch Dave Stewart. Stewart on the mound. He was the loser in game one. He pitched four innings, gave four runs. He'll face Barry Larkin at short. Billy Hatcher in center. Paul O'Neill in right. Line up much the same with Eric Davis in left field. Al Morris, the DH. Chris Sabo at third base. Todd Benzinger at first base. Joe Oliver, the catcher. And Mariano Duncan playing second in their pitcher will be Jose Rijo. Larry Barnett, the American League umpire, is still absent due to illness. Bruce Freming pressed into service. Ted Hendry has the plate. Randy Marsh, Bruce Freming, Frank Pulley, Rocky Rowe, and Jim Quick are the other umpires. There's Bruce Freming. Bruce Freming, interestingly, has on Randy Marsh's hat. It you doesn't can see fit. It. No, it does. See how small it is? It's on. Frank Pulley's socks, Jim Quick's long johns. He's got long johns on. Can you believe that? And Larry Barnett's jacket and shoes. So he's a, a regular fashion plate out there he's tonight. A, he's a hybrid umpire. Here is Barry Larkin standing in to start it. And we'll be able to tell early on with regard to Dave Stewart about his well-being. Remember the last time he worked in game one, his manager, Tony La Russa, said it was the worst start I've ever seen him have. And it is ball one. Larkin, Hatcher, and O'Neill in the Cincinnati first. Barry has had five hits in this series. There's a strike ball by Ted Hendry, the American League umpire. One and one. Tickets hard to come by for this one. And off the glove of Jamie Quirk. That's Sam Perlazzo coaching at third base. And Tony Perez, perhaps a Hall of Famer in the future, coaching at first. The first baseman when Cincinnati swept the Yankees in the World Series in 1976. ball to start the game into short right and the center fielder wants it Dave Henderson has it for the out you watch him every day he'll drive you crazy the way he bends and twists under a fly ball but he always catches them there's one out and that's the way this one starts yeah Dave makes catches like that like his dominant eye is his right eye he leans left and catches it with one hand it is unusual Billy Hatcher Strike to him. You can tell Dave Stewart's going to get the high strike. That's two straight called high strikes from home plate umpire Ted Hendry. They caught my eye also, Tim. Mm. Strike one to Hatcher, who has nine hits and two walks in this series, and the foul makes it strike two. Dave Stewart, a 22 game winner during the regular season. Last night, he threw out the ceremonial first pitch, and here tonight, he threw out the meaningful first pitch. All rides with him. Oh, he is hit by that one, and Billy Hatcher goes down, and that one had to hurt. He'll go to first with one out, and where did it get him? Looked like it was right above the elbow. There's a nerve center right above that elbow. And it may have been in his hand. Yeah, it looks like his left hand. 
Billy being, tries to get out of the way of it. Yep, hit him boy, right on hurt. top of the left hand. Oh, brother. And being a right-handed batter, it's that left hand that's dominant on the bat, and that had to hurt. The count was 0-2 when he was drilled. Well, Billy Hatcher, 9 for 12 on the series, two walks. I think Dave Stewart was trying to move him back off the plate. I don't believe that was intentional. Here's Stewart going into the ball. Good hitters protect the outside part with two strikes and it looked like Hatcher's approach was outside and that ball plunking him on the top of the left hand initially thought it was the elbow but it's his hand and it was not a glancing blow when you no. get that hand pinned against the bat and get hit by a pitch with that velocity it hoists Take him back in that hand and then find out if he can go to the field in the bottom of this first inning. Hatcher, by the way, stole 30 bases during the season. I'll tell you, we were led to believe that Winningham was going to be in the ball game, but evidently Billy talked Pinella out of it, and he's the runner at first base. Paul O'Neill is the batter. O'Neill, who had that great series against Pittsburgh, is one for nine here in this World Series. They play him a bit to pull. Hitting room through the right side. The runner going. Jamie Quirk throws and uh, out at second base. So Cincinnati tried to change the hit batsman into a double. One of the toughest things is to start on an irregular basis when you're a catcher. There's a lot more to it. Footwork, throwing. Jamie Quirk remarkably threw out 11 of 21 that tried to steal on him this year, and he gets Billy Hatcher here in the first. Like an unsure tag by Gallego. He may have been in there, but the ball beat him. And for the second time, a pitch goes off the glove of the catcher. Quirk gets two balls and a strike. Quirk was out here early taking some extra work behind the plate, throwing down to second, and it paid off there. There are two out in the inning. Half swing by O'Neill makes it two and two. Here's another look at that tentative tag by Mike Gallego at second base. He thought it was going to be a short hop. No, he had him before the foot hit the, the bag. Good call by Bruce Frimming. And a line drive, and that's foul. And it did not touch the glove of McGuire, so it's two and two. Charged an error to McGuire last night and a ball hit by O'Neill. Tell you, this comes ever so close to McGuire's, not really that close when you look at it from that angle, about a foot and a half, but clearly foul. Mark and fly out. Hatcher hit by a pitch and then out stealing. Two and two to O'Neill. And it's blocked by Quirk and that split finger delivery from Stewart. There's Billy Hatcher on the bench. Trainer Larry Starr still working with him. Already has the hand wrapped. And a bouncer for Randolph. The Reds do not score. After one half inning, nothing doing. Billy Hatcher, left hand wrapped, answers the bell here in the bottom of the inning and Dave Stewart at the end of the first half inning asked over to the Cincinnati bench, is he okay? Jose Rijo goes to the hill. He defeated Oakland in the first game of this World Series. Here's the lineup. Ricky Henderson, Willie McGee, Dave Henderson, Harold Baines, the DH, Carney Lansford at third, then Jamie Quirk, Mark McGuire way down in the batting order, Willie Randolph, Mike Gallego, and Stewart. One point I want to make before the first pitch is you don't take an eye for an eye approach right now. You don't knock an A's guy down even if you think it's intentional. And a strike from Riho. Remember Jim Cotton and I were talking in the pregame show about the one thing the Reds want to do with the A's. You want to let them sleep. You don't want to do anything to arouse them. And if you start knocking guys down that's what you'll do. One and one to Ricky. The sleeping dogs lie. Yes, sir. I'm sure that's what Lou Pinella and Stan Williams, the pitching coach, conveyed to Jose Rio. Fly ball in the left 
field. Eric Davis there. One out. Ricky talking to himself as he heads back to the bench. You know, we saw that a lot of that last night. Ricky talking to him. It's bad when you answer yourself. <laughs> That's true. Yes. The banner is Willie McGee, the switch hitter and a foul ball. Willie played center field most of the time for St. Louis. Played right field just before the trade over here to the Oakland team. He can play either place. Count one and one. Renee Latchman is the third base coach, hoping for some traffic down there. And Dave McKay is the first base coach for Tony Larusa. One and one count on McGee, National League batting champion. Base hit. No nope, foul ball. It just kept drifting. Willie took off thinking he had a little something there and it's one and two. That's McGee. He'll hit the ball anywhere. That's because he hits with his arms and his hands. He doesn't use his body to hit and you can see this ball tailing just foul by a foot. But Willie McGee one of the most unorthodox hitters. You can see him hitting with his hands. He doesn't use his lower part of his body. Why he is a singles hitter, and I mean a good singles hitter, an occasional home run. He's kind of forgotten about the long ball. This one in the left center, that's fair, and it is a caught. Now it's dropped by Davis. He's hurt. McGee's into second base with one out. Davis had it, lost it. Don't forget he had a bad left hand from a previous play in postseason and a bad left shoulder as well. would think that left shoulder going after the ball we thought it was his left shoulder the other night in game one when he went down hard on the turf. Ultimately we found out that it was his left hand. You could see that unusual style of McGee again slapping that ball to left field and watch Davis come in he had the ball in his glove and he held on that's a legal catch but it looked like he turned over on his hand. Could have been his right knee. That's also been giving him problems. Looked like his knee hit the yep. glove and knocked the ball out. Yep, it could have been his knee. It could have been his wrist or his hand or his shoulder. We don't know. Oh boy. Hatcher in the top half of the inning. And Eric Davis here in the bottom half. And he was hurt. That's why he released the ball. Again, Larry Starr is out there. Ten field. Let's watch what happened to Billy Hatcher in the top of the inning. An 0-2 fastball from Dave Stewart, plunking Billy Hatcher right on the top of the left hand. That it appears that it's a, a rib injury. You know, if Billy Hatcher cannot bat when his his turn comes next, and if Davis has to leave the game here. They'd have to put both Winningham and Braggs into the lineup. They could play Benzinger in the lineup and bring in uh, Lee, Terry Lee, to play first base. That would be a stopgap measure. Yeah, you could put Benzinger in the outfield, maybe Billy Bates. But if Hatcher and Davis lead, leave, the only two regular outfielders that the Reds will have remaining will be Herm Winningham and Glenn Braggs. And those two are warming up Braggs and Winningham. It would be a guess from the way Eric Davis is failing to recover that we're going to see Winningham in there now, and it'll be very interesting. When it Athletics win tonight, and Davis and Hatcher, they find out overnight that there are serious injuries. You cannot make replacements and substitutions in the World Series. That is correct. It's happened before to other clubs, and it really is a rule that should be changed. If you could substantiate the injury, I agree 100%. Well, Davis is going to stay in. Suffice to say, we have two hurting people in the Cincinnati outfield Eric Davis and Billy Hatcher. Meanwhile, McGee's at second, one out, and Dave Henderson is up. And after that long halt in play, let's see how Riho gets it off. No score, first inning. And that should be the second out. 
Duncan backs out. Two gone. Two men out here in the bottom of the first. Cincinnati Reds trying to ice down the series have two players to ice down between innings. You're right about that and they're both hurting. We watch Eric Davis out there. He's limping scrolling around. Trying to pull himself back together as Harold Baines the designated hitter steps into the batter's box. He hit a gargantuan home run here last night. That was good. Yeah, that's a leather long fan. <laughs> he had access to the PA mic, I think. Here is strike one to Harold Bay. I think he was born with one. <laughs> no score, first inning, and a lot of things have happened. Rio throws high and away. Jose is their best pitcher. Now they're going to walk Baines. Canelo didn't, as he fell behind, didn't like the idea of Baines getting one to drive. And they'll pitch to the right handed batter, Carney Lansford. The only lead the A's had last night, trailing 1 0, a two run shot. And I mean that literally. That ball went a ton to right field. I'll tell you the one thing that walking veins now and getting to Lansford does, it allows Paul O'Neill to shorten up in right field because Lansford does not have power the other way. And a strike on the outside corner to Lansford, who has not driven in a run in this series. Here's his two out chance. the middle and Oakland takes the lead and Bain stops at second base and it's one nothing Oakland. <laughs> Willie McGee with a double off the glove of Eric Davis driven home by Lansford. It's the first run against Jose Rio in this series. The Athletics two for 23 before that hit with runners in scoring position. Make that two for 24 because of Henderson popping up with McGee at second. So they're now three for 25 with runners in scoring position. Tony La Russa put this batter Jamie Quirk in the lineup looking for balance in the batting order against Rio. Two on, two out. He's going to have a big first inning. There's ball one. Most teams try to pitch Carney Lansford inside. They try to jam him. Look where this slider is from Rijo. That's the reason they try to jam him because he leans out over the plate and handles that ball away very well. So it's one nothing A's here in the first inning. And a strike to Quirk. Runner at second base now is Baines with Lansford at first two out. Burke drove in 26 runs this year and Rio wants to get out of this inning right now. Rio has a blister on the middle finger of his pitching hand and will be aware of that as we go along. We got that one by Quirk. Behind they will throw him out. He said 90 initially then he said no more than a hundred. By that time he should be the bullpen time for Cincinnati if things are right for the Reds. Two on two out. And just inside and off the plate to Quirk. He wanted another left handed batter. He could have played Hassey tonight but he opted for Jamie Quirk. We'll see what comes of it. Two is Quirk just got that back foot out of the way. Now the runners will go. It's one of those hopscotch sliders. Watch after it happens. 
quick feet by Jamie Quirk. He's been very good. Seven for 11 with two outs and runners in scoring position this season. Seven out of 11. Baines and Lansford will be on the move. There go the runners. And the strikeout the first of the inning. So the A's get one run on two hits and they leave two. Eric Davis will lead off in the second inning. Lansford drives home the run. one nothing Oakland after one. Look at Eric Davis. He's gone from bad to worse and being helped off the field. He was due to lead off in this inning. He was limping out there in the outfield. He apparently hurt his ribs as well. He's had a bad shoulder, a bad knee, and he is out of game four. What a shame that is. He had that ball off the bat of McGee, who eventually scored. The double by Willie McGee, and Eric Davis had the ball, but more importantly, he has a serious injury, it appears, slamming to the ground. Shoulder, the knee, the hand, and now he had scheduled arthroscopic surgery on his knee for the second time after the series was over. Looks pretty bad, I'll tell you. Tim, even more so now. Cincinnati would like to end this thing here this evening. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No replacements can be added. Billy Hatcher hit on the hand by Dave Stewart. So Glenn Braggs will lead off the top of the second instead of Eric Davis. And they keep Winningham on the bench, a left handed hitter. Dave Stewart, who hasn't allowed a hit, will pitch to Braggs, Morris, and Sable. Tell you, some people think the thing that ignited the Reds was. The home run by Eric Davis in the first inning of game one. That was last Tuesday night in Cincinnati. That really woke the Reds up and they said, what the heck? We're not going to worry about any newspaper columns about how dominating the athletics are. We can do the same thing, and they have. Braggs is in no hurry to get up there. Look at there, they scratched. Hatcher and Winningham is going to enter the game. That's in the Cincinnati dugout. So the Reds, after one inning, have lost O'Neill, excuse me, Davis, and Hatcher and have only O'Neill of their original outfield. And have no more outfielders left. Now that's if indeed Winningham is in the game. That's not official, but that was on Lou Pinella's lineup. Here is Braggs, 0 for 1 in the World Series. His name became more familiar to people when he took that ball off the bat of Carmelo Martinez and kept it from being a home run over in Cincinnati during the National League playoff. In game six. And a strike to Braggs. We mentioned it before, this fellow has a tremendous physique. He's built more like a football player than a baseball player. That's how strong he is, folks. Holy cow. What is going on have here? Have you ever seen that before? No. I never have. What is going on here? I have here? never seen that before. He swung and missed and broke the bat. We kiddingly talk about it. He's built more like Fort Braggs. Now look at this. It hits his bat back and breaks in two. You've That's seen, what did it when he hit his back. Yeah, you've seen <laughs> Bo Jackson do that over his head, over his knee. How about his back? We've never seen Bo do that. Maybe Bo doesn't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Here's that catch off the bat of Carmelo Martinez in game six. Coming to the Reds from the Milwaukee Brewers, and the, are the Reds ever glad that he did? Not only brawn, but height. He's leading off, and he corks it into left field. Ricky Henderson settles under it. One out. These fans are holding their breath on every pitch that Dave Stewart tosses up there. And the Reds have apparently lost both Hatcher and Eric Davis. There's Ricky. And here is Hal Morris. He'd like to start hitting one for 11. With the one RBI. Fellow who batted 340 during the season. He 
move of the lead on the Stewart delivery. Only 309 at bats for Hal during the year, so he didn't qualify for the batting title. Right fielder for the Athletics in the American League won the National League batting title with a 335 average. A ball goes out of play. That's strike two. This Oakland pitcher, Dave Stewart, in winning 22 games, had 11 complete games. There is his pitching coach, Dave Duncan. And he would like to get seven innings out of Stewart tonight. Here's Chris Sabo in the on deck circle. To the count to Morris with the A's leading one to nothing here in the second inning. <laughs> this guy. See the stand, guy. Uh, see the guy yelling last inning. <laughs> Third base umpire Frank Pulley said it was no swing and it's two and two. This fellow's dressed like the catcher Steinbach unless he's up there. Backing up Jamie Quirk, he's not that bad a catcher, is no, he? No, I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen that. A guy, <laughs> guy wearing his equipment to the ballpark. In the upper, upper deck. <laughs> Fly ball for Ricky Henderson again. Two out. Morris one for 12. Stewart pitched 11 complete games this year. And of those 11 complete games, he had four shutouts. So whenever you give him any runs, you've got the odds against you. Here's Sabo, who popped two homers last night, and Chris is six out of 12 in the series. Strike from Stewart. He certainly is more comfortable tonight, Tim, than he was in Cincinnati. Swinging, swinging at. Are you talking about Come Stewart? Stewart? Yeah. Yeah, well, the other night he was falling behind a lot of batters. He hasn't walked anybody. He has hit a batter. He walked four in four innings the other night. He is normally not wild. An excellent walk to strikeout ratio. That's in the corner, putting Sable in the hole one and two. We've already seen Braggs into the game, and we might see this player, Herm Winningham. Two and two. Remember Pinella's comments last night. If Sabo hits balls in the strike zone, he usually hits them hard. His problem going after bad balls. Breaking ball is chopped foul. It looked like Sabo jammed his elbow a little bit on that swing. This fellow is a tough cookie, former hockey player, attended Michigan State University, Michigan University. He's about as quiet as they come. Rookie of the year two years ago, a real favorite in, favorite in Cincinnati. Two out here in the second. And another hit for Sabo. His seventh hit of this series coming with two out. The first Cincinnati hit. What do you know about those injuries, Jim Cott? Well, standing right outside the Cincinnati clubhouse down here, Jack, Billy Hatcher apparently is going for x-rays in the back of that left hand. The doctor right now is examining the ribs of Eric Davis. So both Davis and Hatcher out of this ballgame. Back upstairs. What a bad break for the Reds who would like to end it here tonight. And of course if this series is prolonged the absence of those two would be a telling blow against Cincinnati. Benzinger at the dish. Sabo can steal a base. He's at first two out. Benzinger out in front. He's two for seven in the World Series. Switch hitter. If you're a guy like Benzinger now with the runner being held at first base. Stewart with a good tailing fastball. You should look for the ball away. Glenn Braggs. Glenn Braggs got it away. A swing and a miss, and he broke it on his back as Tom Browning looks looks at it. As incredulous as we were. It was something. Mm. 
about brute strength. They don't Man. make them like they used to. Bats or players? Bats. Bats. Fly ball to deep right center by Benzinger. McGee is on the move, and he caught it. What a play by Willie McGee. I tell you one thing right now. And Seiko would not have caught that ball. And this is why he is there. Defensively, said Tony La Russa, and look at the play. With Sabo on first base and two outs, Todd Benzinger hits one deep to right center. Too much hang time, and look at Willie McGee track it down. Hey, it looks like instead of a glove on his left hand, he has a Sesta. The batter is McGuire. We have a couple of defensive changes for Cincinnati as we look at Willie again. You know, one of those highlight things, that's what he looks like he's carrying on his on his left hand. Man, that's a big glove. A little number by McGuire. Rio throws him out, and Mark is three for 12. I wonder if Jose Canseco would have caught that ball, Tim. Well, he had the speed, but maybe he didn't have the right glove for it. <laughs> and he's hurting a little bit. That's one yeah. of the reasons he's not in the lineup That's tonight. Exactly so tonight right. he couldn't have caught it. Tony LaRusso telling us that the reason he has McGee in there is for defense. He expects a good, strong game out of Stewart, and he wants to save the runs defensively since they haven't been hitting a lot. And that kept the score from being tied. It's 1 0 Oakland here in the second. Randolph is up, and there's the strike. New left fielder having already batted is Glenn Braggs. Where Eric Davis had been playing and Herm Winningham in center. And he might be a little bit better center fielder than Billy Hatcher. And he's a left handed hitter, so he should be comfortable against Dave Stewart. One and one to Randolph. Two balls and a strike. He doubled and scored the run in the first and then saved the run in the top of the second. Lansford has the RBI. And the foul ball and that nailed Oliver the catcher. Don't tell me he's going to get into the dressing room. What a nightmare this has been for the Cincinnati Reds. That's what Pat, a nightmare. That's Pat O'Brien's word. You oh. can't use it. <laughs> Look at this. Now Joe Oliver gets one on the right foot. What a nightmare. Another look as it bounces off the tootsie of Joe Oliver. Been a lot of talk for years about catchers getting hard toed shoes, but the problem with that is you can't squat. There's no flexibility in the catching shoes. They're hard to run in. They don't like to change them every That's right. inning and every time they come. Bad part is when you get hit by a foul ball, you usually get hit in the same spot over and over again, and it never heals. Tell me about it. <laughs> You're still not healed? <laughs> no. <laughs> Ten years later. Two and two to Randolph. Long throw coming up for Sabo. Two out. Sabo handled 10 chances last night and tied a record. He is a fine defensive third baseman, one of two in this ball game. Lansford also, they both led their respective league, leagues in defensive percentage, the best fielding percentage. Lansford's done it for the last five years. Here's Gallego, and he is one for 10. Bats with two out. Rio gets a strike in there. A good year blimp sends us these pictures as the sun had. Out of play by Gallego. Strike two. Missed to Mike Gallego, and it's one and two. You mentioned Tony Pena. When Joe Oliver gets down on one knee, he's getting low to try to get Rio to throw that ball out of the strike zone. See if he gets low again. And the 
pitch was low and it's two and two. He goes only five eight difficult to pitch to. Rehoy retired the last three. In the bottom of the second one nothing open. Of this game right after five o'clock local time and no problem with the sunlight and a full count. If you walk him, you ask for trouble because Ricky Henderson follows. And ball four. A pretty good pitch there, wasn't it? Well, we've talked about umpires not giving those high pitches anymore. I think the surprising thing about this is it's a slider. That's either an indication that Riho feels he can get his slider over better than his fastball or a poor selection of pitches. Because you do not want to walk Mike Gallego on a pitch other than the one you think you can get over the best. Sometimes a pitcher's fastball will run so much they have better control of the breaking pitch. Maybe that was the case. The slider especially. Henderson fly to left his first time. There's a strike. Turkey is five out of 13. And five out of eight against this pitcher. Gallegos on the move. Oliver can't get him. Run around the third with two out. Stolen base, error catcher. I think one of the reasons that Larusa may have sent Gallego is that Joe Oliver just got a foul tip on his toe, and that's the foot on which he pushes off. Gallego stealing and steals it easily. You see Oliver a quick throw but a low throw and it skips by Mariano Duncan and Gallego goes to third. Tony Russo telling us before the game he was going to open things up. No, no passivity in this game. And the count two balls and a strike to Ricky Henderson. Now La Russa said you fellas haven't seen us at our best. He said we are an aggressive team and even though we're down three games to none we're going to do some things if we can. Three and one. Oliver makes a trip to the mound to talk to his pitcher. He had two strikes on Gallego and walked him on a three-two breaking pitch. Now he's three and one to Ricky Henderson. Looked like an easy inning as Jose got the first two. Joe Oliver flashing down two fingers and Jose Rio throws the slider. So one's a fastball, two's a slider, and I guess three would be the fork ball. Only three pitches by Rio. He does not have a curveball. He's going to get the slider again. Hmm. Fastball away now. He shook him off. And he walked in. This is the third walk by Riho, one of them intentional to go with two hits. And Willie McGee, who has been in the middle of everything thus far, is the batter. And Canella comes to the mound to talk to his pitcher. Canella's got to do everything he can, Tim, to win this game tonight because of the absence of Davis and Hatcher. You made that point earlier, and I think that's an excellent point. I think Pinello's going to ask Joe Oliver probably what he's going to do if Henderson tries to steal. He just talked to him. I doubt that they'll throw through. But if they do, Gallego might wander off a third base and take a chance on scoring. But with Henderson on first base, a left-handed batter up, it's tougher for a catcher to throw with the left-hander up there because you can't see whether the runner is running or not, and you don't get a good jump on the ball. They may elect to just allow Henderson to steal the base 
And if that happens, they may want McGee to pitch to Dave Henderson. We'll see. McGee doubled off the glove of Eric Davis in the first and scored a run. And Rob Benzinger of a hit and an RBI. Ball one to Willie. On the other side of the coin, if you're Ricky Henderson, do you run here with Benzinger holding him on? There's a big hole on the right side. You have a runner in scoring position at third. So this is the strategy being thought about and ultimately employed by La Russa. Ricky has stolen two bases in this series. Pitch out. That makes a ball too. So that's one of the reasons for the trip to the mound by Pinello a while ago. The big thing here for Rio is to get McGee, forget everything else, and get the batter. Well, if that's true, why would you pitch out with a count one ball, no strikes? I don't know. I, I don't know whether that was good philosophy right there. Now Henderson a flying start a strike call and no throw third stolen base for Ricky Henderson in this series. That ties him with Davy Lopes for the all time stolen base record in postseason play with 20. Now a hit out of the infield would mean a couple. Two and two. Diego at third. Ricky Henderson at second. Rio has given up two walks in this inning. He's two and two to McGee. He's leading one nothing second inning. Got him in the inning is over. Second strikeout for Rio. Four left for the A's, but they lead it one to nothing after two. Has a severe contusion to the right rib cage and a possible kidney contusion. Billy Hatcher has a severe contusion to the left hand, the top of the left hand. They're both going to Merritt Hospital for x rays and evaluation. All right, let's go back upstairs to Jack Buck. That's the report from here. There they are leaving for the hospital Eric Davis and Billy Hatcher. Meanwhile, you saw Joe Oliver start this third inning with a ringing double into left, his sixth base hit. Of the World Series on the tying run at second, nobody out for Mariano Duncan. And the A's will guard against the bunt. At the top of the order, Barry Larkin, Billy Hatcher. You don't bunt on the road normally, but it's so early in the game. We'll see whether Lou Pinella plays for one run or a big inning. Even if you get a bunt down, Joe Oliver, not a fast runner at second. Ball one to Duncan, who is two for ten. And we'll mention the absence of Bill Dorn. And there's Pinella giving the signs. They're in on the corner. They're really expecting the bunt. Lead off double by Oliver. And that's ball two to Duncan. Cincinnati a game away from being the champions of baseball. But trailing here one nothing in the third. Duncan up the middle and Stewart keeps the runner at second and throws the batter out. But Duncan did not move him over. And a good play by Dave Stewart. That ball hit very sharply. And watch how Stewart just smothers the ball. It hits his wrist, crawls up his torso. He checks on Oliver and throws out Duncan. Good play by Dave Stewart. Now it takes a hit by the Reds to tie the game. The thing I remember mostly about this pitcher, Stewart, is when he wore the Philadelphia uniform, he couldn't even pitch out of the bullpen. He couldn't get the ball. Released by the Phillies in 86 and signed to a AAA contract with Tacoma of the Pacific Coast League. 
Ball one to Larkin who fly to center his first time and then he won 20 21 21 and then 22 this year. National League President Bill White with Ed Bargo one of his umpiring supervisors. And Lansford keeps the runner at second two out. So it will be up to Winningham just into the game and up for his first at bat. Routine play for Carney Lansford but watch how he looks Oliver back at second and then makes the easy play at first base. Interesting way that Carney Lansford gets set influenced a great deal by Cleet Boyer the great third baseman of the Yankees who was a coach here and had a lot to do with the fielding prowess of Lansford at third. Winningham is 0 for 1 in the series and this is his first at bat tonight tying run at second two out. Ball one. Winningham played for Montreal and the Mets. Ball one strike. That ball is foul as Jamie Quirk tried to get to it. Jamie started tonight rather than Steinbach or Hassey. He's thrown a runner out, stealing. He was with the Kansas City Royals in 1980 when they lost the World Series in six games to the Phillies. And then he was with the Kansas City Royals in 1985 when they beat the Cardinals. So he has been on both ends of World Series wins. One win, one loss. His first appearance in World Series play. And the count goes to two and two. Good pitchers are never in a rush to get a batter out. They like to set them up and make them hit what the pitcher desires. Three and two. No sweep, says that room. That's what the A's are facing tonight. But they lead one to nothing in the third. Tying run at second, two up. Had men on base in each half inning. McGuire unassisted. The Reds have left two. We'll return to Oakland Coliseum after this message and a word from your local station for the game and time in your area. Here's a strike from Rio to Dave Henderson. We're underway in the bottom of the third. One nothing. Oakland. Strike two to Henderson who popped out his first time. He hasn't driven in a run in this series and he is three for ten. Ball one. Henderson, Baines, and Lansford. Up and it's two and two. It's Randy Marsh, the first base umpire. Anderson calls time. And a strikeout, and that's the third of the game for Riho. 68 playing 18 games over there with the Cardinals. I'll tell you the thing that impressed me more than anything catching behind O, the size of his legs and how much he used his legs to hit with. 
He would pick up that right foot. It was all a timing device. A lot like Mel Ott. Big legs, big thighs, and he really used the lower part of his body when he hit. The count goes to one and one to the batter. Harold Baines, the designated hitter. And Mr. Rowe is sending his telecast back to the Far East. Baines up the middle, shortstop Lockett. And two out. Barry can bounce around, considered to be the best shortstop in the National League. Bad news for hitters is Larkin Lurkin. Don't hit it there. Uh -uh. This ball would be a base hit with a lot of shortstops, but look how fast Larkin closes the gap and makes his throw about five feet on the, on the right hand side of second base. And with two out, Lansford slices it to right, and Paul O'Neill takes it down. And it's a quick third inning. We've played three. The A's lead it. One to nothing. It's a lovely sunset to enjoy here in the East Bay area. We have played three innings at the Oakland Coliseum. And the score one nothing A's. Tim McCarver and Jack Buck. Hoping you enjoy the action here tonight. Tell you a lot is said about how much money players are make are making nowadays. And this gentleman right there to the right of your screen screen Larry Rothschild is the bullpen coach of the Cincinnati Reds. And it, I don't you may or may not know that bullpen coaches do not make a lot of money. But if the Cincinnati Reds do win this over one hundred thousand dollars will go to every player and coach. And Larry Rothschild has been in baseball since nineteen seventy five only two months in the big leagues told me before the game the other day. As O'Neill leads off. He said I told my wife the other day that if we win this thing we'll break even me for, for mean, all the years for meaning for all his 15 years in the game he'll finally break even so it's not always guys who are rolling in dollars. So he could use that check mm -hmm. one ball one strike to Paul O'Neill grounded to second is first time leading off in the fourth strike two on a borderline pitch he looks at the umpire calling Vegas. What are the odds now? One thing the A's have not done is given Dave Stewart much breathing room. One run only. There's a strikeout. Stewart's first of the night. He's and retired the, four in a row. One of the few splitters that he has thrown. He was taught that pitch initially by Sandy Koufax in the minor leagues with the Dodgers. And he honed it to perfection under Dave Duncan here with the Athletics, their pitching coach. Saw that ball really dipped down out of the strike zone to Paul O'Neill. Here's Glenn Braggs. He replaced Eric Davis in the lineup, and he's 0 for 1. Ball 1. Now a strike. You have an American League umpire behind the plate, Ted Henry. Most National League umpires, when they when they call as a ball, they do nothing. A lot of American League umpires, including this umpire, will toss up the left hand. Takes a little getting used to. What a big swing by Braggs. One and two. Glenn's last at bat. He swung and missed at a Dave Stewart fastball and broke the bat on his back. Something that neither. Jack or I had ever seen no, before. Never. <laughs> Swing and a miss and a cracked bat. Man. Lance regards the line at third, and the foul goes out of play. There's Lansford positioning against Braggs. Playing the pull. Our Goodyear blimp is the Columbia. Sunset picture a while ago. That ball is fair. And two up. Five in a row. Jim Cott has a little something for us, James. 
Well, Jack, you know, the A's have had so much success the past few years tend to take them for granted. Carney Lansford in spring training came out with some T-shirts that said, contentment stinks, stay focused. He wants these A's to stay focused, try to win another world championship. Cincinnati Reds making it awfully rough for them. Nothing frivolous about this fellow. He is all business out there. There are two out, and Hal Morris hits one hard to Randolph. Six in a row sent down by Dave Stewart. Bottom of the fourth rolls around. The A's lead the Reds one to nothing. Outer pitch from Rio, strike one. Tony Larissa made some drastic changes. Took Canseco out of the lineup. Put Jamie Quirk in the lineup. Played McGee in right field, and that's paid off already. Trying to blow Quirk away. On the left is Larissa's lineup. On the right, you see Hatcher replaced by Winningham and Davis replaced by Braves. That's Larissa's lineup on the wall of his dugout. You know, it looks like he's not fooling around with this better team. Mm -hmm. Jamie Quirk, a great story. His eight major league team. Since 1975. Oh. Jamie has never had more than 300 at bats during a season. And you mentioned Riho. Both Riho and Stewart throw split finger fastballs. Stewart's is not quite as hard as Riho's. There's another Hummer and a strikeout, and that's four strikeouts for Riho, who has set down five in a row. Game five scheduled. Could be interrupted by a Cincinnati victory here tonight. And strike one to McGuire. One and one. Looks like Riho has hit his stride here. Pitching very well. Doing it with fastballs and sliders. He has not thrown a splitter yet, and maybe that's because of that blister on the inside of his middle finger of his right hand. That one's on the corner, and McGuire's in the hole. Luke Pinella wants it to end here tonight, and they would fly home tomorrow. And the 1990 baseball season would be over. The A's have other ideas. Two and two to McGuire. Tapped out one three his first time. And another strikeout. That's five for Rio. That's not unusual for him, and he has set down six in a row and makes McGuire shake his head. I tell you, trying to hit that pitch, that slider right off the plate, like trying to get a buttonhole through a starched, or trying to get a button through a starched buttonhole. You ever try to do that? Get one back from the cleaners and try to pry that button through there? Watch where this pitch is. Perfect. You're not going to hit that pitch. Forget it. Take it and hope they call it a ball. There's a strike to Randolph. And Rio is making short work of this open fourth. Mark McGuire is three for 13 now. And a foul, and Rio is not fooling around out there. McGuire has yet to drive in a run in this series. Oakland has stopped hitting at the wrong time. As far as they're concerned. They do lead one nothing here in the fourth. Joe Oliver just sitting there and Riho pumping that ball in. One and two. Short hops the ball, and that's seven in a row set down by the Cincinnati hurler. We played four, one nothing A's. Stewart pitches into the fifth inning. He has retired six in a row. Both pitchers are in a groove. Rio set down seven in a row. Stewart six. 
Sabo singled his first time and went around strike one. The action that Jim was talking about, by the way, is down. Whenever that dead spin, that dead fish ball goes down in your screen, you can tell from home that it's going to be a fork ball or a splitter. Sabo didn't have a very good swing at that one, strike two. Sometimes you can't tell whether it's a slider or the splitter. I think that was it. That's that dead fish. You saw it go down out of the strike zone to Sabo. You might get another one right here. One and two. Sabo, Benzinger, and Oliver in the center. Reds have left two and lost a man stealing. And they trail one nothing. One, two, Jim Cott. Jim Cott, what do you have? Well, talking about that speed on Dave Stewart's fork ball, it is about 78 79 tonight, which means it should be effective for him. And he runs the count full. You know, once in a while, this batter Sabo will get in a bad groove where he chases everything. Last pitch, 78 miles an hour. Hit. He's two for two, and that's his eighth hit of the series. A leadoff single here in the fifth, and that's a time run. Had to come in with a fastball, Tim. Right. Got into a situation where Stewart had to give in with a fastball. I mean, Sabo hits a rocket over Gallego. Good thing Mike didn't catch that ball. Might have been taken out to Ricky. I mean, that ball hit like a tracer. We see Sabo making some strides toward being the most valuable player in this World Series. Benzinger is up, robbed by McGee the last time. And Sabo is a threat to run. He's swiped 25 bases during the season. Lead off hit. Field and that'll keep the runner at first. And Ricky Henderson has it one out. But Benzinger didn't do what he wanted to do. Move the runner. He's all for two and two for nine. Sometimes the pitcher won't allow you to do that, and you have to do what the pitcher allows you to do. If he throws the ball away and you try to pull it, it's going to be a four-six-three double play. That's why pitchers are more inclined to stay away from left handed batters with the runner at first and the runner being held on. So he can't pull it in the hole over there. Joe well, Oliver has had a good series. He's had a half dozen hits. All one. One on, one out. One nothing. Oakland, fifth inning. Cincinnati has out hit the A's 3 2. The A's put their hits together in the first for a run. Swing the fly down for the second out. And Pinella trying to figure out a way to get back into this game. Jackie Moore, one of his coaches, with him in the dugout. Matter of fact, Tony LaRusa took over the Oakland Athletics in 1986, and the manager that was deposed when he took over, Jackie Moore, who is now Lou Pinella's bench coach. Tony. Duncan is up. Duncan does not bat well against right handed pitching. But when he hits them, they go. He's hit 10 home runs. What do you bat against right handers? 227 on the year and led the majors hitting against left handers, batting 410 against lefties. So he's a different hitter. He used to be a switch hitter with the Dodgers, but a right handed hitter all the way now. At first two out. This time. That's a funny looking pitch, wasn't it? You could see Kurt jab at it. Well, that's that slider that is designed to go away in the strike zone. 
It's a backup slider. It's designed to go away and it stays inside. It both fooled the hitter then and fooled Jamie Quirk. A lot of pass balls come on backup sliders. Quirk thought the ball was going to jump, but it didn't. Duncan went away, and I think. Yep, send the first base sometime in the innings over. Second strikeout for Stewart. Cincinnati's left three. We go into the bottom of the fifth. The A's still lead one nothing. The Reds are going to approximate what the Giants did to the Indians in 54. Mentioned the 111 wins for the Indians, only 97 for the Giants. Here's Gallego leading off in the home half of the fifth for the A's, who have been limited to two hits. This fellow walked his first time. Full of base. There's strike two from Rio is set down seven in a row. 103 wins for the Athletics this year, only 91 for the Reds. The only other team that has been swept after having that big a disparity in wins 14 for the Indians, 12 for the Athletics. That was a 1954 athletics. They won 111. The Giants 97. Dusty Rhodes 250 foot home run. Down the right field line that just ducked in and squeaked around that screen at the polo grounds. Oh, polo grounds. Now you go on two. And he lost the bat and he's out. That's eight in a row and a half dozen strikeouts for Rio. Slider out of the strike zone and one handed little bat toss toward third. I said the A's in 54. Obviously, I meant the Indians. That starting rotation of Garcia, Lemon. Win. Win. Teller. Wow. Pretty good lineup. Mm. Arleski and Mossy. Bobby Avila hit 343 that year. Here is Ricky Henderson. 0 for 1 with a walk and a stolen base. Ball one. Will Bob Welch take the day off tomorrow or will he pitch against the Reds at 8 o'clock Eastern Time? If so, that means the A's will have won this game. There's a strike. Two to the batter, two and one. Here's Bob Welch. Second from the left. Heimbach and Dave Henderson in the picture with him. Time called by the batter. And a lot of times the umpire won't give the batter time when the pitcher is into his motion as Rio was that time. Now it goes to two and two. He just haven't had a runner since the second inning, haven't had a hit since the first inning. Yeah, I was going to say, you can just see that confidence building in Riho. We talked about the splitter. Maybe one of the reasons he's not throwing the splitter and only relying on his fastball and slider is because of that blister on the inside of his right finger, middle finger. And a full count of three and two. We're at the Oakland Coliseum. And a sold-out crowd watching Game Four of the 1990 World Series. We're in the bottom of the fifth, and the A's lead the Reds one to nothing here on CBS Sports. Three and two. On the corner, Henderson thought he had walked, and that's the seventh strikeout for the Cincinnati hurler. He's retired nine in a row. Ricky's finally talking to someone other than himself. The umpire. He's been talking to himself for four, three and a half games, and now he has the umpire to talk to. We talked about how healthy that was earlier. Look at this. Here's the play when he made that spectacular catch in game one. He's talking to himself, <laughs> looking at the ball. And there he is the other night talking to himself. Here's McGee with a foul. That last time he was talking to his bat. Yeah. And here he is after the home run last night. He's talking some happy thoughts to himself. <laughs> he is a showman and what a talent. 
There are two out here in the fifth. McGee is up. He hits the ball foul out of play to the left, and it's 0-2, and that one stung Willie's hand. See, with 55,000 people there, the reason you may talk to yourself, you're the only guy that you can hear. Got a lot of folks here, right? World Series, they celebration. Do, they do ordinarily make a lot of noise, but these yeah. Reds have taken a lot of the steam from the Oakland fans. He hits another foul. McGee double in the first and scored. On a base hit by Lansford with two out. Ricky thought that ball was outside. He started to go to first base. Throw yourself, Rick. He did. Two out. Just missed. One and two to McGee, who not only has scored this game's only run, but took a base hit away from Benzinger and a run away from the Reds in the second. Stays one and two. And Dave Stewart can't be feeling too comfortable. He has to win this game. He's leading only one to nothing here in the fifth inning, so Rijo is keeping his club right in it. Were it not for the injury to Eric Davis, we'd be scoreless here. We he had a good look at that one. Two and two. He's not only throwing hard, but he's hitting spots. That spells bad news for the hitters. Rio has retired nine in a row, six by strikeouts since that second inning. Man. Scoots one hard to Duncan. That's ten in a row by Rijo. Now we've played five, and it's still one nothing A's and a squeaker. We'll return to the Oakland Coliseum after this message and a word from your local station. The pitchers, Dave Stewart and Jose Rijo, dominate this one. Three hits for the Reds, two for Oakland. Top of the batting order, Barry Larkin. He hits seven home runs during the season. He likes to bump, sprays the ball around. He's 0 for 2 tonight and 5 out of 16. And something made him smile. He fly to center. He grounded a third. He faces Stewart. His fan two, walk none, hit one, and allowed three hits. Spins him out of there. The breaking ball got away from him. Earlier in the game on an 0-2 pitch, Billy Hatcher was hit on the left hand. He was forced to leave the game. That, however, was a slider that just stayed inside. And that's ball two. Larkin, Winningham, and O'Neill in the sixth. That's ball three. The time run out. Tim Cott wants to talk about the hot corner. Well, Jack and Tim, Tim last night referred to third base as the reaction corner. In order to react, you get your body in position to do it. That's how Chris Sabo does it. And then Carney Lance for just a little different, kind of reminiscent of Cleet Boyer, who had a lot of influence on Carney as a third baseman. Much lower to the ground, ready to react. Right down on the deck with a glove. Well, mm -hmm. Winningham, a replacement for Hatcher. Is up in a key spot. Are the Reds bunting. He's have to guard against that. The way the Athletics are swinging the bat, you might think so. We've got a lot of options for Lou Pinella now. You can hit and run. You can allow Larkin to steal, or you can bunt. And Winningham shows the bunt and takes ball one. Tommy Larusa told us that he wanted seven innings. Obviously, hope that he is well. So with regard to Eric Davis, we're talking about shoulders, knees, ribs, and kidneys now. Well, the whipping he's been taking. Meanwhile, ball one to Winningham. Stewart keeps a wary eye on Larkin, who walked to start this sixth.
There goes the runner. Winningham dunks ahead. There goes Larkin to third. Throw is not made as Henderson dropped the ball. First and third, and nobody out for Cincinnati. You know, I was about to say, if this were Cincinnati leading one nothing in the sixth and a leadoff walk, the bullpen would be busy. It's yeah, a little different with Oakland. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oakland has had problems with their bullpen. Look at Larkin making sure that Stewart pitches, and Herm Winningham just getting his bat on the ball, and Larkin. Just taken off for third. Excellent base running by Barry Larkin. There the, might have been a play if Ricky hadn't dropped the ball. I think Larkin makes it easily because Henderson's going toward going toward left center. He's got to throw back across his body. Now first and third and nobody out and a foul ball by O'Neill. But I guess it's a moot point when you make this throw. When the ball falls out of your hand. Comes a non throw and Larkin into third easily. So the Reds with runners and good runners, fast runners on the corners. Winning him at first, a threat to steal as O'Neill is up. He's one out of 11 in the series. And the Reds and their fans bank on him at the moment. They're back at second and short. They'll trade a run for a double play. O'Neill pops it up for the first down on the infield. Gallego is under it. One gone. That was a big, big out. One gone. And instead of Eric Davis coming up in this spot, we're going to have Braggs as the batter. Put up. And Glenn Braggs is up. He is 0 for 2. Eric Davis injured before he had a chance to bat in this game. Robin Williams. He'll find something funny about this situation. <laughs> First and third, one out. Braggs wants at least a fly ball. Gays want the double play. Ball one is outside. Camilla knows that this is a grand opportunity for him to tie, go ahead, perhaps end this World Series tonight. A similar at bat for. Glenn Braggs in game one if you remember in the eighth inning first and third the Reds were trailing by the score of four to three and he hit a little chopper over second that Gallego couldn't stop on on that artificial turf diving into first inside the Braggs and that's ball two that tied it up and then they the Reds won it in the tenth inning on the Joe Oliver double opportunity knocks for the Reds right here Perlazzo the third base coach said make it be a good pitch. First and third, one out, two and all to the batter. Fastball coming. High ball three. I mention it again. If this were the Cincinnati situation, were they in the field now? That bullpen would be buzzing, but not here. Nothing doing. It's Stewart or nobody at the moment for the A's. And with that tying run at third, Braggs might be swinging. He was taking that ball four. That's the second walk of the inning in the game, and the bases are loaded and one out. Stewart, bases loaded, one out, and now who's the big man for Cincinnati? 0 for 2 tonight and 1 for 13 in the series. And with one run batted in, it's Hal Morris. He wants at least the fly ball. Wow. It's over a five year period. Ball one and Stewart has walked two and given a hit in this inning. As Larkin at third. Winningham at second. And Braggs at first with one out. Maybe a double play out at second. The A's still lead. The 
six. The A's still lead one nothing. The runner at first base is reminded on a ball hit with the bases loaded, don't let the second baseman tag you. For that reason, Bragg slows up here, and he cannot take, you see that little stutter step? That prevents him from going into Gallego, who had the ball hung up in the glove, and he just barely made the double play. You see that little hang up? And Braggs wasn't aware, obviously he was aware, but he wasn't allowed to take out Gallego because he had, had that little stutter step to prevent Randolph from tagging him. Very interesting double play there. First pitch of strike to Dave Henderson in the bottom of the sixth with Riho on the mound having set down ten in a row. Henderson flies it into center field for Winningham. One out. Henderson is 0 for 3 and that's 11 in a row. Tim, you could see Braggs looking at the second baseman mm -hmm. trying to determine what he was going to do. Well, you're reminded not to let the second baseman tag you. You don't want to tag and then a throw to first. But had Braggs not slowed down, can you imagine what he would have done to Gallego? Gallego only 5'7, Braggs 6'3 and a half and about 230. That would have been some collision, a one sided collision. Ball one to Baines, 0 for 1 with a walk tonight. One nothing Oakland to the bottom of the sixth and a strike. Don't overlook this wonderful pitching effort by Jose Rijo. He struck out seven. Walked three, one intentionally, and allowed two hits, both in the first inning. something but he pops it up backing out is Duncan 12 in a row two gone in the sixth late game Phoenix and the Giants Giants are undefeated Falcons play the Rams check your local listing tomorrow then tomorrow night if we have game five eight o'clock Eastern on CBS Sports for the World Series Lansford with two out He's jammed and hits one to Sable. That's 13 in a row by Rio. We have played six innings. One nothing. Open. Jim Codd down below home plate right behind our camera position here. This is the Oakland A's pitching chart charting Dave Stewart's work. Tells you how they pitch him, where they play him. And of course, Tony La Russa watched that seven good innings from Dave Stewart and that's a look at the types of pitches and where he's throwing them to get those seven good innings by the way Jose Rijo is up to 92 pitches right now for Lou Pinella's Reds you're right Jim that's what Larissa told us about Stewart he said I want seven innings from him then I've got honey talking about Honeycutt and Eckersley so they want Stewart to get through this seventh meanwhile the Reds who missed a golden opportunity in the sixth send up Sabo to start the seventh and he's had two of the four Cincinnati hits both singles. It cracks in in the left and Henderson chases it back at the track and it is off the fence. Great play by Ricky Sabo for two and he's safe. He's three for three. There's the time run with nobody out in the seventh and nine base hits in the series for Sabo. Nine for 15, and this ball comes ever so close to going out of this ballpark. Fastball up in the strike zone. Sabo running hard all the way, and we will see just how close this ball comes from going out. About six inches. Wow. This could be a tie game very easily. Sabo three for three. And the batter, Benzinger, wants to move the runner or drive him home. Ball one. See, that's the reason he's not bunting right here. You've got Oliver and Duncan coming up. They are not that proficient against right-handed pitching, even though Oliver does have a base hit in this ball game. So that's why Ben Singer's allowed to hit here. Good base runner Sabo. Benzinger takes a strike on the corner. This batter hit a ball hard in the second with Rob by Willie McGee. That caused Cincinnati a run. And he flied to left. run 
at second nobody out. He advances the runner and Randolph throws to first one gone. Sable at third one out tying run. And Marissa will now direct the infielders. Had his hands together, so we'll see what that means. It looks like the infield's coming in. You got to play the infield in here. And a hot hitter in this series, Joe Oliver is a key man. He has a double. He's one for two. He's had six hits in this series. He'll try to get Sable home from third. Stewart from the stretch. It's out of play because Oliver was out in front. Stewart's going to try to work him away. I doubt that they will come inside with a strike as Quirk's out there talking to him right now. See the slider outside and watch Oliver reach and pull it foul. Oliver, a hero. In game two in the tenth inning. Could do it again here in the seventh inning. It's trailing one to nothing. Stewart would love the strikeout. Again with the slider away. First pitch was up a little bit. I think Dave Stewart's telling Joe Oliver right here that he's going to stay away. Away, away. Speaking of away, the Reds let one slip away in the sixth. They don't want to miss this opportunity. The runner will stay as Lansford fields the ball two out. What a big put out that was for both teams. Three similar pitches. Sliders away, away, away. Watch Lansford look at Sabo. Just looking him back. There's nothing Sabo can do. Big, big out for Dave Stewart. In the sixth inning. Cincinnati at first and third, nobody out. The base had loaded one out and didn't score. Here they had a leadoff double. Runner at third, one out. Now he's there with two out. And the batter, Duncan. 0 for 2. Ball one. This is the spot where the pitcher has to have a lot of confidence in the catcher, Tim, when he's keeping that ball down. That's exactly right. You got to make your pitch. And just rely on your catcher to make the play if the ball's in the dirt. Field back with two out. One and one now. And the Reds let this opportunity get away, slide away. Who knows how many more chances they will get. Yeah, think about how tough it is for a catcher here. You call for the breaking ball. It's designed to break down, but you don't want it down so much that it's in the dirt. Sabo at third, two out. Time run. in the hole one and two. Luke Pinella knows that he's missed an opportunity in the sixth. They have missed more than one opportunity tonight as you see 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position this evening. That should end the inning. Dave Henderson wants it. The A's still lead. One left for Cincinnati. They've left six. Seventh inning stretch time. One nothing open. As we go on to the bottom of the seventh inning, Dennis Eckersley strolls to the Oakland bullpen toward the left field corner. And is this wonderful pitching effort by Jose Rijo going to be wasted here? He's retired 13 in a row. Hasn't allowed a hit since the first inning and pitches to Jamie Quirk, who has fanned twice. And ball one. That is his 93rd pitch. You heard Jim Cott at the end of the sixth inning talk about 92 pitches for Rio. And remember, Lou Pinella told us 100 would be max. Pitching so well, though, you know. And a good play by the first baseman Benzinger and that's 14 in a row and these A's can't give Dave Stewart any breathing room. 
Quirk 0 for 3. Good play by Todd Bensinger adjusting to the bad hop on the ball hit by Quirk. A quirky hop. I'll say. Bensinger made sure he blocked it. The batter is McGuire. He hits it to deep right field. Back at the track, O'Neill and two out. 15 in a row by Riho. Two out in the bottom of the seventh inning. What a job by this fellow. A winner in the first game and sparkling tonight. And we've said it. He's done it with a fastball and slider. Great location. I mean, his sliders have been right on the corner. McGuire coming close here. But McGuire was not a good hitter to right field. A 400 hitter when he made contact to left field. A 120 hitter when he made contact to right field. Big difference. Rio made him go that way, and Randolph takes us to right. And Larissa howls at the umpire. Athletics trying to get off the hook here. Larissa looks in the dugout. They're on a hook. They're on a 3 0 hook. And leading by a scant 1 0 score in the bottom of the seventh. With two out. Strike two from Riho. Boy, is he hitting the spot. There's Dave Stewart. Nothing doing in the bullpen, so he'll go back to the mound in the eighth. That ball is foul. Oliver tried to get to it. If the A's do nothing here in the seventh, Stewart will have a one-nothing lead to work with in the eighth inning. He's responded to this point, pitched out of some terrible jams in the sixth and seventh. Some Cincinnati fans have made the trip. Oh, and two to the batter. in a row by Riho. We've played seven innings. The Athletics won. Cincinnati nothing. Leaving the mound after the seventh inning and approaching the dugout, Jose Rio said, let's go, you guys. Vamanos. Let's get some runs. Get me a run. Get me a couple. Let's get back into this game. A. Stewart on the mound. The bullpen of Cincinnati can't do much to him when you're behind in the game with I that bullpen. Tell you, it was a funny thing. When Rio came off the mound, about five or six of those guys all bent down and tied their shoelaces a little tighter. They've been ready. Yeah, they've been relaxing a little bit, and they realize they may be in the ball game in the next inning or two. Larkin is all for two with a walk. He let off the six with a walk. Ended up at third base and a double play ball off the bat of Morris into the sixth and a leadoff double in the seventh by Sabo was wasted. What's going to happen here in the eighth? One nothing A's. And ball one. The third baseman Lansford with Larkin up there is in a unique position, Tim. Yeah, he's guarding the line and guarding against the bunt. Tough spot. On the corner to Larkin. This is the leadoff man in the lineup. Winningham to follow. Having replaced Hatcher. Then O'Neill. In this eighth inning. Foul makes it one and two. And now Lansford at third goes deep. Stewart has to chase the balloon. A full staff of relievers. Burns, Eckersley, Nelson, Sanderson. I'll tell you, that guy whose name starts with an E is the guy you should be concentrating on there, however. The left-hander comes up. Maybe Rick Honeycutt. One and two to Larkin leading off. That ball slices foul and drops out of play. It stays one and two. Well. Aside from one at bat by Hatcher, 
Cincinnati's played this game without Hatcher and Eric Davis. Jonas foul falls on the others to get some runs. Base hit for Larkin. Dave Henderson has to handle it well, and he does, and he holds him to a single. And this is four innings in a row that Cincinnati's put the leadoff man on base. Herm Winningham is in the ball game because of what happened in the first inning. An 0-2 pitch to Billy Hatcher conks him right on the left hand. X-rays proved negative. Both he and Eric Davis taken to Merritt Hospital. Eric Davis the possibility of a bruised kidney. And he is in the emergency room at Merritt Hospital right now. The tying run is on and Eckersley and Honeycutt warm up. Eckersley the right hander. Mark and a threat to steal. Hitting room through the right side. And a bunt foul by the batter hits the umpire. Hit him on the left hander wrist. Only a manager with the confidence in his bullpen at Lou Pinella has would elect to bunt to tie in the eighth inning. And that's what you're doing. You're on the road, and this ball comes back and pops Ted Hendry on the left hand. There are a lot of guys being hit by baseballs tonight. This is a game Pinella wants to win. He may not have Hatcher or Davis for future games. He'll be weakened, no question. But the last time he was in this situation, he hit and run with Winningham and Larkin. Larkin takes a safe lead. Four innings in a row. The Reds have put the leadoff man on. And five times in the game. And they've been shut out. Mark and leading, not going. Strike. <laughs> 0 and 2. See, that's a big pitch because now it's 0 and 2 to Winningham, and that takes the hit and run out of play. So now they've got to earn it. There's no sacrificing and driving in the tying run, things of that nature. It takes the bunt away. Right. Double play killed Cincinnati in the sixth. An effective hitting in the seventh. Leadoff single in the eighth. He bunts, and the play will have to be to first and safe. Winning and beats it out. A two strike bunt. How about that? It was in a perfect spot. Oh. So the two strike count takes the bunt away, huh? I mean, that's this surprises everybody. Well, maybe I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for me. It, this shocks me right here. You couldn't have put a blueprint down any better than Winningham and Jamie Quirk, understandably, coming out slowly to field it. And Winningham has a bunt base hit with a count 0 and 2. Let's see what O'Neill does. Do you wow. know these Reds are one big hit away from taking the lead and perhaps winning this series? There is ball one. As O'Neill showed the bunt, he's 0 for 3. Winningham did not give himself up when he bunted. He was actually bunting for a base hit with a count 0 and 2. O'Neill, the batter, and the options belong to Pinella. And that bunt will cause the play to go to first and save, and the base of the loaded. Stewart pulled Randolph off the base, and LaRusso wants to come out and talk about that one. Base is loaded, nobody out. It'll be a sacrifice and an error when this argument is over. I think Tony is saying, look, to Randy Marsh, that you cheat on this play all the time. But when you're throwing the ball inside the line, it looked like Paul O'Neill may be pulling up lame with a hamstring pull. Oh, he was on the bag. He was on the bag. It appeared to me that he was on the bag. Well, that's a big play, and it really opens the gates. Argument has ended. 
Willie Randolph stays, tries to stay on the bag as long as he can, and it appeared to me that he had the bag. Both pictures looked that way. Yep. Willie didn't argue much about it, and the bases are loaded, nobody out, and the batter is Glenn Bragg. And no pitching change. They go with Stewart here in the eighth. No, Eckersley is ready. Braggs is 0 for 3. And he pops it out of play. The infielders are back at second and short. They'll give up a run, the tying run, for a double play here in this eighth inning. So Rio may be rewarded after all. Reds have left six hit into a double play and lost a man stealing. Ball back to Stewart. He will come home. Braggs hits a possible double play ball and only one and a run scores and we're tied. It is a 1 1 game on the infield out on the fielder's choice by Braggs. Previous play was a sacrifice and an error to the pitcher. Now the fielder's choice in the RBI. Funny thing, had Stewart executed that play now on that throw to first, it was a, an error on Stewart. Then you bring the infield in, and in a situation like this, Larkin probably doesn't score. Now it's first and third, one out, and Larusa to the mound. These A's are in deeper, deeper trouble now than they were even when this game began. This is the second time that Glenn Braggs has driven in a run on a fielder's choice in this series. He did it in game two, as we said earlier, to tie it. Honey cut is ready, so is Eckersley. The batter is going to be Hal Morris, a left-handed hitter. Who hit into a double play in the sixth, and Stewart will pitch to him again. First and third, one out. Over at third base is Winningham, a very good runner. And at first base, Braggs, who has ordinary speed and looking for his second hit of the series, is Hal Morris. And it doesn't even take that. A sacrifice fly puts the Reds on top. A squeeze could do it. A squeeze, a viable option right here. I'll tell you, Lou Pinella likes to do it. He learned it from Billy Martin. And he showed the bunt, but nothing happened. It was not a suicide squeeze. I wonder if it was that play that we talked about, where the we talked about it all season, where the hitter bunts the ball toward the third baseman, and the runner at third follows him in. And when the throw is made to first base, then Winningham walks home. He's already halfway home. Sure now, looked like that. Al Morris 0 for 3, and Stewart steps off to see if he can learn anything. 1-1 one, one in the eighth. And a high fly ball to right will put Cincinnati on top. The runner tags. They could never throw him out. The throw goes into second base, and it's 2-1 Cincinnati. That bunch single scores the go ahead run. Larkin started the inning with a hit. Al Morris with a sacrifice fly. He hit this ball. I tell you, he came very, very close to hitting this ball out of the ballpark. You see Winningham, how he's looking around. Carney Lansford, you, it's amazing how many third basemen wander into the view of the guy who's trying to tag up. Sabo takes a strike from Stewart. Third baseman will stand between the runner at third and the outfielder. Try to block off his vision so he may, may leave too early. Sabo has had two singles and a double. Nine hits in the series. The runner going and a foul. Strike two.
Anderson and Weiss talk it over on the bench. Their club six outs away from being eliminated. Sabo hits a foul ball and there is room for McGuire. Inning is over, but Cincinnati takes the lead. Two runs, two hits, one error, one left. They've left seven. Bottom of the eighth. The score now. Cincinnati two, open one. A great shot from the Goodyear blimp overhead at Oakland, but down here right behind home plate is the pitching chart of Jose Rijo. Lupinella City go 100 pitches. That's exactly where Rijo is. 100 pitches, action in the Cincinnati bullpen and a pinch hitter for Oakland. Jack and Tim. Benzinger talking to Rio. The pinch hitter is Ron Hassey batting for Gallego. He's announced. Cincinnati bullpen is busy. And Rio has retired the last 16. He has allowed two hits both in the first inning. So the Cincinnati Reds finally cash in. After missing opportunities, and they lead two to one in the bottom of the eighth, and they lead three games to none. Strike to Hassey. Coming to Russ's lineup card. He'll have Hassey, then Ricky Henderson, and Willie McGee. He has Canseco on the bench. Pitches inside. Under normal circumstances, I think you'd see Riho lifted, but how can you lift a man who has retired 16 in a row? He is pitching wonderfully here in game four. And the ball back to the screen. Thought for a moment it hit him, but it did not, and it's ball two. Came very close to hitting Hassey. He skips out of the way. Oakland needs a runner. They need a run. Cassie leading off. And he went around, and it's two and two. There's Canseco. We may see him before this evening is over. Second baseman Duncan. One out. 17 in a row by Rio. Five outs remaining for Oakland. Five outs away is Pinella from the title. And around to the leadoff hitter, Ricky Henderson. Well, Ricky has a flair for the dramatic. Is he in the mood here? Tonight he has walked and he's 0 for 2. Strike from Jose. Canelo used to manage Ricky Henderson over in New York at Yankee Stadium. One and one. Not only that, he was traded for Jose Rio. Rio going to Oakland. From the Yankees. Henderson going to the Yankees. A lot of connections. Ricky swinging late, falls in the hole one and two. Well, that slider has just been as wicked as probably any slider he's ever thrown over a, a period of a ball game. So much for that sore hand to his and that blister. One out here in the eighth. Did he go around? He did, and there are two out. Oliver throws to first for the put out, and there are two gone. That's 18 in a row by Rio. That is his eighth strikeout. Henderson to the bench. Two out. Four outs remaining for Cincinnati to clinch it all. Slider out of the strike zone again. And it appeared he went too far. Good call. 
Willie McGee of Oakland has one of their two hits and he has scored the only run that was in the first Reds got two in the eighth McGee drills one to the center fielder winning him and that is 19 in a row by Rio he might end up being the most valuable player of this series we played eight innings the Reds two, the A's one the good folks at Goodyear have been sending us these pictures all throughout postseason play in Boston here in Oakland Cincinnati Pittsburgh and we appreciate it this is the Columbia overhead and we're into the ninth inning with the Reds on top two to one and Stewart still on the mound and a bouncer to Randolph off the bat of Ben Singer one out in the ninth. Good effort by Stewart here tonight, but he allowed two in the eighth. Base hit by Larkin, bunt single by Winningham. There's Rio. The bullpenners are seated. And a glance at the Oakland bench. Some glum faces there. Glum and shocked. And strike one to Oliver. Dave Stewart entered this series winning six consecutive postseason games in a row the athletics had won 10 consecutive postseason games in a row they've lost three here in the series and trail in the ninth two to one Oliver pops it up into short left Ricky is there and two out Tony La Russa have some good hitters up in the ninth, including that batter, the designated hitter Baines. Now with two out, Duncan is up. He's 0 for three. And a strike. Billy Hatcher back from the hospital in the clubhouse. To being struck by a pitch. Fly ball to center field to Dave Henderson. That takes care of the Reds in the ninth. A great job by Stewart, but maybe not good enough. Bottom of the ninth. Henderson, Baines, and Lansford. Two to one, Cincinnati. Stat since the third game in the American League Championship Series. After the third inning, Oakland has not scored a run. They scored their run in the first inning here tonight, and they trail two to one in the bottom of the ninth. Oakland needs a run. Cincinnati needs three outs. Dave Henderson leads off against Rio, who's retired 19 in a row. Has fan date walk three, one intentional. Strike two. Dave Henderson, 0 for three. I imagine a lot of folks are gathering in Fountain Square, Cincinnati. Sabo guards the line against the extra base hit. And at first base, Bensinger does the same. Strike! And the Reds are two outs away from being the champions of baseball. That's 20 in a row. Nine strikeouts. For Jose Rijo. Fastball right on the corner. He has been living there all night long with his fastball and his slider. And here comes Lou Pinella. And Lou Pinella told us before the game that when he goes to the mound, he doesn't take the pitcher out. 
Only Stan Williams will take the pitcher out. I wonder if he's going to change it right now. There's Randy Myers yep. in the bullpen. They're dealing with Harold Baines. And the word for Jose Rijo who is going to leave is Magnifico. Canseco picks out a bat. Myers in. Rijo out. And Seiko coming up. Do you like drama? Two to one Cincinnati. One out, bottom of the ninth. Jose Canseco batting for Harold Baines. He is one for 11 in the World Series, and that one hit was a home run. Two to one Reds. You're right. Myers gets ahead. Canseco has not been getting around on the fastball. I would imagine Myers will stick with that pitch. Line away, and the outfielders are as deep as can be. Pinella two outs away from the title. One ball, two strikes. Sable guards the foul line at third. Bensinger does the same at first base with one out. One and two the count. Two and two. Good swing by Can Seiko. That's one of the few pitches we've seen him bend right on. Uh huh. That ball was in a little bit. More on the inside part of the plate, and he did have a crisp cut at that ball. When you foul it straight back, you just miss it a hair. When you foul it off the other way, you're not getting around on it. Ball three. Ball three. Ever so close. And a chopper to Sable. Two out. And Seiko fails to deliver. And the Cincinnati bench ready to explode. And the last hope for the Oakland A's. Is Carney Lansford. The last hope. They are on the verge of executing one of the most astounding upsets in the 87 year history of the World Series. Ball one. What can you do? What can you say? Rio rooting for Myers. Ball two. And Browning looks on. Anxious to get back home to the new baby. Two balls and a strike with two out in the bottom of the ninth. Talk about the unexpected. Oakland a run in the first, the Reds two in the eighth.
Billy Hatcher in the T-shirt back at the park. Popped up and a short right foul ball. Bensinger wants it. Cincinnati, the champions of baseball for 1990 with an improbable sweep over Oakland. baseball season of 1990 and the Reds able to celebrate as Benzinger gloved the ball they poised and they ran to the scene congratulations to Lou Pinella. Ballpark, of course. No! I don't hand to cheer for the Reds, but they'll be royally greeted back home. Look at that picture. Juan Marichal, his birthday today. It's Riho's wife's birthday tomorrow. Juan Marichal never won a game in World Series play, and here is son-in-law, 2-0. Even though Marichal's ring represented that is a World Series ring with Marichal. On it, but how about that for a proud father-in-law? He never won in the World Series, and his son-in-law has won twice. Happy news back home to the Dominican Republic, where the winter baseball season started last night. Well, what do you think, Cincinnati, and you folks at Fountain Square? The Reds have brought it home to you. I'll show you the trophy tomorrow. We'll show it to you folks here tonight. Billy Hatcher leads the parade back into the dressing room. Look at Chris Sabo, Tammy's finally excited. Is the scene here in Oakland where the 1990 baseball season has concluded. Pat O'Brien will have plenty for you. We're going to join in on the celebration.